Kia ora everyone. So I just want to go over adding scale bars and just adjusting some of the, the layout now that we're sort of further along in our design. Um, you can see here in my layout on Rhino that I've got a what's called a scale bar. And this is a great way of showing the size of your design without having to put a whole lot of dimensions or writing a certain scale on, especially when you're handing everything in digitally so um, this becomes a great way to help other people understand what you're looking at what we'll do we've, we've got this one here uh, I'll just zoom in, that I've already created um, so we can see here that from this little zero point all the way to here is equal to four meters and a little bit in between um, if you want to know more uh, around scale bars, I'll put a link in the description to uh, this great uh, website, um, which has a, a article on understanding scale bars and, and links to them and a little bit of information. So you can sort of see, uh, generally speaking, the different sizes and how they can be utilized, different scale, sorry. Uh, in a scale bar. Go back to Rhino. So we've got this one here. I'm going to sort of make this again just so we can see it as an example. Uh, and we need to sort of figure out what scale we've got. So if we click on there, where are we? Click on this, come back there. Um, you can see I've locked this uh, viewport into sort of into model space, and I've I've got this at one to a hundred. I've had a few questions about ones if we don't follow the standard conventions um, because of the size of your drawing or project, um, and I'll show an example of that shortly. But we'll just stick with one to a hundred to start with because um, it's reasonably easy to work out so 1 to 100 means 1 millimeter in on the page that we're looking at is equal to 100 millimeters in real life or another way uh, to, to, to think about that is if I have a thousand uh, millimeters in real life so a meter that will be 10 millimeters in uh, the paper space or on the page that I'm dealing with. So we can sort of figure that out. So there's uh, a calculator we can use, well, if we use a calculator. So if we have a thousand uh, millimeters, so one meter, and if we then divide that by the scale that we're trying to do. So here we're trying to divide that by a hundred because we've got one to a hundred so we type in a hundred equals ten so that means we just need to make a little bar for one meter that is ten millimeters long so another example of this would be if you had a weird scale so let's say one to eighty which you typically wouldn't use um, because normally you would set drawings up to be printed um, but in this case uh, we've got a, a relatively small page, so you may need to use some funny sizes. So if we have 1000 divided by 80 equals 12.5. So you can see that we'd have to then draw uh, a little bar that is uh, for every one meter would be 12.5 millimeters. Um, so at this stage, we're just going to do um, 1 to 100. Just going to come up and use the rectangle tool. Zoom in a bit. So we can start out by just drawing this little one. So that was going to be half a meter in this case. So we can uh, click there. Um, and then, so we want uh, half a meter, which would be five millimeters in the paper space. So we can go use the at symbol. And then five comma one so that's telling us that we're drawing a rectangle from where we clicked across five and up one uh, so I can push return 
we've got this little rectangle now so here and then we want to do uh, another sort of one next to it so that we've got um, a full meter so if we click on there and then we can hold down alt or in a, on a windows or option on a mac we can click that over um, at the moment uh, i don't have anything uh, snapping so i want to put some snaps on so on a mac the snap options are here um, we might just use the grid or we can use the ortho those are good to have on and also turn off depending on what you're doing so if I click on that it moves so I want to just come back and then type move uh, and then we can click the endpoint and snap it to the endpoint so you can see now they're exactly in the right place um, let's zoom in a bit more on that so we can see a bit clearer uh, and then when what we want to do is we have this one solid or the other one whatever you want to do but i'm going to have this one solid so we want to what's called hatch that so if i type hatch in the command i can select that push return um, and then that's got a solid so we just can click apply so now we've got a solid um, uh, fill so to speak i can copy both of those Hold down option again, bring that across there, and now we've got uh, those. So just to repeat that because it's quite useful to know. So rectangle, click, so I've got the end, so I've got my snaps happening, endpoint, and then I come up here, and uh, this time I want the meter, so we can go at. Um, 10 comma 1 and then return and we've got that in there and then I can copy that again so I can just hold down so I'm going to move I'm going to copy that so see if I copy and then I can hit the endpoint and then I can come over and hit the other endpoint so that's making sure they're in the exact right place and then just push return um, and then I want to hatch. So I've already got that selected, so I can just type in hatch uh, and go apply. So now we've got that set up. It's a good idea in here um, just to check those. So I can maybe just take, type in distance and just make sure that those are what I thought they would be. So that's 40 millimeters so that's exactly what i thought it was going to be which is good um, and this one i've got oh, i've grouped this i've got these little lines coming up so we could do that so i can just type in line making sure i've got the in uh, point selected and then i've just drawn that across um, and then i can copy that so co for copy click on the endpoint, and i just set that up every part that I want it to be and then enter or return to get out of that so you can see now I've got those little lines now the text I can just type in text and uh, I'll probably want it a bit smaller than that so let's try 1.5 is a bit of trial and error depending on how you want this all set it set up so I'm just going to set that there and then again I can select that and go copy and come down here and just set that out where I want it now they're all the same and then I would set this double click on it and I can set that to one uh, apply double click on that one two apply and then set four meters in this case so you may need to sort of have a different combination just depending what uh, size um, 
scale you're using and how much detail you need to get to so that gives us a little bit of an indication so if we just go back and look at the Akisoup article you can see in here um, they sort of depending on the scale uh, how big you make this and there's another way of making that as well if you want um, so there's a lot of ways of, of showing the scale uh, for my drawing that seems to work quite well so now I've created this I can select all that and group it so I can create a group uh, that means that well, if I just click on it we've got one so in this case I can then move it up to here um, and zoom out so we've got those two drawings now we've got this plan here or top view I guess tap plan and in this case it's got a whole lot of lines that I, I don't necessarily want so we can fix that so if we just double click in here and then in the layout panel or the panels um, we go to display and it gives us some control of what we're looking at so we've got display mode wireframe we can change that but I don't want to change it from wireframe. I, I'm, in this case, I'm quite happy. I just don't want all these extra lines. So if I come down here and s just get rid of these ISO curves, that gets rid of things in the uh, extra lines. So that's just tidied that up. So that was the ISO curves. Um, and then if we click on this one, we can see it's 1 to 250. So just going back over um, that scale bar, so if we think about how far one meter is so we, oh, i've got rid of the calculator so calculator um so one thousand for millimeters divided by 250 equals four so we can just draw a little box that is four millimeters now so uh, i'll quickly do this again type there shift it four comma one in this case um, and then I can move the copy that clip that there uh, I'm going to do a different one this time so I can select those um, move click on the endpoint there and bring that down What have we got? So we've got one, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So we'll do five. That's good. This time I want them all to be uh, solid. So I can just select all of them and then type in hatch. Uh, and that'll do it to all. Or I can escape that. Um, or I can type hatch. And then it will ask me to select the elements. Uh, I have to select them one by one I think um, and then hit enter and then that applies to all of them rather than applying a hatch to each individual one and then uh, we'll do the text as well right. apply and then we can figure out where we want that let's do it there Um, copy there. So zero, one, two, three. put M for me to apply. So if we zoom out, ooh, we can, let's do zoom extents. Oh, that's something else I've done. Don't worry about that. Delete that. Zoom extents. Uh, now we can see we've got the scale uh, bars. 
I'm just showing you another one here. Um, I would make sure they were all the same. But you can see that this is at a different scale because we can see that 1 to 5 is a little bit different up here. Hopefully that helps you uh, clarify those. I've also um, got another one here um, just to, to help you understand. I've got another section or a section here that um, is at 1 to 50. So we can see here 1 to 50. Let's lock that. And if we look at this view, um, there's no option to change that sort of clouded out. So what that means is whenever we're in a 3D view, especially perspective, um, certain parallel uh, 3D views you can have a scale at, but in a perspective view you can't have a scale. So um, it's good to, to, to know that.